So behind me right here, guys, is the brand new Sony A80J. Now this is Sony's uh, top tier OLED TV to compete against you know, the likes of what LG is offering with the C1. It's currently priced at $2,299, which is a great price for an OLED TV at 65 inches. And of course you can get it in different sizes. So you've seen the unboxing, it's pretty quick. It's uh, a nice, simple process. So let's start off with one of the first things about the device, just the design itself. Now as an OLED TV, it is thin, at its thinnest point and it's something you have to behold. It's really nice to see that. Uh, and of course, you've got a plethora of ports on this TV. Now, this TV comes with two HDMI 2.1 ports. One is an eARC port as well. So if you've got say a PlayStation uh, 5 and an Xbox Series X or a Series S, you can, both, you can use both consoles together with HDMI 2.1 capabilities. Now, this doesn't have all the features that you would like for a next gen console. By saying that, what I mean is that it's missing VRL. Now, hopefully that will come with an update. Sony says we'll be getting that, but at this point in time, it's not available yet. Now, VRR will help with a lot of games, but this does support, of course, 4K 120. So hardware wise, the TV looks great. At different angles, it looks really nice. And I think it's something a lot of people will like aesthetically in their home. Now this TV comes with a remote control, this giant bad boy right here. This is the Sony standard remote. It's big, but it's also rather light. So it's kind of an awkward feel to it. Now you've got uh, your standard number key at the very top. Then you've had the featured applications, YouTube, Netflix, Disney Plus, and uh, Amazon Prime Video. Then you've got the Google Home button, input, as well as a settings button. And then you've got a few more. Now. The, the remote control is simple to use. I do like the lightweight, but I wish it was just less cluttered with a fewer buttons. I don't think we need a number button anymore, but you know what? That's something some people might like. I would say it is definitely usable. It uses two AAA batteries in here, but overall it's a solid remote that functions via Bluetooth. And now software. So Sony TVs in the past have had terrible software on their TVs, and I'm glad to see them go with Google TV, and it is a much more refreshing experience. Uh, this is not to be confused with Android TV, it's a much newer uh, TV interface from Google, and on this device, it works really, really well. Now, there are some drawbacks to it, of course. Uh, it feels sometimes a little cluttered, especially if you have YouTube TV and all the different things it pulls in, but it does have all your content there right in front. So if you've got stuff that you bought from a Google Play Store, like for instance, I have a Superman Man of Steel, it will show up right there on the very top for you, and so on and so forth. Now, it will also pull from your different app, um, streaming apps, uh, that you uh, currently subscribe to and populate that as you go through the menu scheme itself. In terms of the general menu for this, you've got quick menus that you can access through your remote via the input, which will take you to your last viewed apps and also your different inputs uh, that you have connected, as well as also your settings where you have a quick settings menu that pops up, giving the ability to, to uh, change your picture modes between cinema, video, vivid, and gaming uh, as well. Now, speaking of gaming, uh, there's one thing I want to start off first, which is Google Stadia. Yeah, no, surprisingly, you guys are thinking PlayStation 5 or Xbox. No, uh, because this is running Google TV, you can install the Stadia app, and I have Stadia subscription, which means that this is one of the very few TVs where you can turn it on, pick up your remote, your controller, either an Xbox or PlayStation controller, or even the Google Stadia controller, connect via Bluetooth and start gaming. It's a very quick process. And I like that. It means that you don't have to buy a console. You can jump in, start playing something like Destiny, uh, Destiny 2 if you want to, uh, or even uh, Mortal Kombat as well. And tons of games on Stadia you can actually pick from. I'm really surprised to see that. And I actually might do a separate video for you guys on Stadia uh, you know, access on TVs, but it's really fun. Now, when it comes to the main gaming consoles, the PlayStation 5, 
and the Xbox Series X. They both, both look good. Uh, again, this TV is an OLED TV. It looks absolutely gorgeous. Uh, we're better playing Spider-Man Miles Morales. You're getting to the game. Those colors are vibrant, they are clear. And of course, the deep blacks show really, really well. Or even playing a game like Star Wars, uh, where you can see it's a much darker scene and they're deeper blacks that comes out and really represents well within uh, your gameplay sessions. Now, the one bummer you will find is that while gaming in direct sunlight or in like our studio space, which has a lot of big windows, you're gonna be seeing a lot of that light reflecting off your display or even just having like big patches where you can't see anything visible. And that's one of the biggest downfalls here because the brightness of this TV is not as high, especially for, you know, well-lit environments or big window environments. Uh, it might be a downside for you. You might actually have to look at this for something, say for a living room or a, a cinema room if you, if you want to, to actually uh, view content. Now, watching movies and shows, it looks great on this TV, uh, especially at night where you've got, of course, those blacks really come out as well. Uh, I would say the one thing is just toggling to it through Dolby Vision is something you have to do in the settings. Uh, so there's some things that Sony needs to do software-wise with the TV, but the hardware is pretty solid. I think overall, you look at the A80J as a television set and you ask yourself this question, does it meet all the needs I want to for a TV set? And for me, no. It's still a really solid TV, but I don't think it covers the full gamut. Number one, the brightness for me is rather low, especially when I'm watching in daytime or even gaming in the daytime. It really doesn't capture as much as I would like. And also the lack of VRR right now is something that is really important, especially for next-gen gaming. So if you're thinking of picking up a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox, that is something that will, you have to you know, bear into account. And again, this is a Sony TV, so I'm kind of, kind of stunned that Sony actually hasn't included in this, especially since they make the PlayStation 5. But the inclusion of Google TV makes for a much smoother experience, and also the ability to jump into Stadia again to me is really fun. Uh, audio volumes are good on the TV, uh, it sounds well, but of course you want to get a soundbar. But overall, this is a solid OLED, not a great OLED in my opinion, and I think um, there are some improvements that Sony can make, but at least this is a solid offering for someone who's looking for something out there. So if you have any questions or any comments, let me know. If you're looking to pick up this TV, besides all I've said, or you think it's fabulous, definitely use the link down below. Uh, otherwise, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Thank Daniel very much. Go watch his videos, Daniel Sin, and always enjoy your entertainment. And he's going to Chicago.